Holy refreshing sense of humility, Batman! It sounds like Christian Bale really did know when to say goodbye to his role as a Dark Knight. Bale has been hot on the publicity trail of late in support of his new race car drama, Ford v Ferrari, in which he plays a racer opposite Matt Damon's mild-mannered car designer. Recently, the Ford v Ferrari press campaign found the former Batman actor sitting down with the folks at the Toronto Sun, who used part of their time with him to ask a question that's long been on the minds of fans devoted to Bale's iconic work in Christopher Nolan's Dark Knight trilogy. The question, of course, was this. Why didn't Bale sign on for a Dark Knight 4? Bale's answer to the question is as simple as it is surprisingly humble. The actor claimed he ultimately decided a fourth turn as the Caped Crusader would have been, quote, overindulgent. That's right, in a time where stars and studios seem to keep lining up blockbuster sequels to milk every single penny out of a franchise, Bale, long regarded as a true actor's actor, apparently told Warner Brothers, thanks but no thanks, when the studio approached him about reprising his role as Bruce Wayne for another Dark Knight venture. And if Bale is to be believed, he did so largely because he didn't want to overstay his welcome in the role. More copycats last night, Alfred, with guns. Why don't you hide them and take the weekend off? That wasn't exactly what I had in mind when uh, I said I wanted to inspire people. It's worth noting that Bale's decision was also greatly influenced by the fact that Nolan was indeed moving on from the Dark Knight franchise. As Bale continued to wax poetic about why he didn't return for a fourth Dark Knight flick, he admitted as much, noting that, outside of his own wishes to leave Batman behind, his decision to walk away from what would have no doubt been a mammoth payday for Dark Knight 4 was equally out of respect for Christopher Nolan himself. Bale explained, We were never arrogant to assume that we had an opportunity beyond one film at a time. That's something that Chris always would talk about. He'd say, This is it. We're making one film. That's all we've got. Then when they came and said, You want to go make another? It was fantastic, but we still said, This is it. We will not get another opportunity. Bale went on to offer that while the trilogy was far from a given for Nolan's Dark Knight saga, it was, if only indirectly, what the director had in mind from the start. The actor shared, Chris had always said to me that if we were fortunate to be able to make three, we would stop. Let's walk away after that. Then when they, Warner Brothers, inevitably came to us and said, how about a number four? I said, no, we have to stick to Chris's dream, which was always to, hopefully, do a trilogy. Let's not stretch too far and become overindulgent and go for a fourth. As we all know, Bale and Nolan got two more chapters of their Gotham set saga after the success of 2005's Batman Begins. With 2008's Game Changing the Dark Knight and 2011's trilogy capping the Dark Knight Rises, they also happened to fashion one of the most celebrated superhero trilogies in the history of cinema. While The Dark Knight, the first of the series sequels, is still widely regarded as being among the greatest superhero movies ever made, adoration isn't quite as strong for Nolan's The Dark Knight Rises, which continues to divide both critics and fans. Truth be told, part of the problem with The Dark Knight Rises is that the film itself feels a bit overstuffed, and teeters frequently on the edge of overindulgence in its own right. Perhaps Bale and Nolan were smart to end their franchise the way they did. Still, there's little doubt that fans of Nolan and Bale's Dark Knight trilogy would have turned out en masse for even a massively overindulgent Dark Knight 4, though such a film may have also tarnished the trilogy's mostly impeccable legacy. While Nolan and Bale's trilogy forever changed the state of Batman's cinematic world, particularly 2008's The Dark Knight, which was anchored by Heath Ledger's unforgettable turn as the Joker. All you care about is money. This town deserves a better class of criminal. And I'm gonna give it to him. 2021 will see moviegoers treated to a fresh neo-noir take on The Dark Knight, coming from Cloverfield and Dawn of the Planet of the Apes director Matt Reeves. Simply titled The Batman, the flick will see the beloved comic book character get back to his detective roots as he seeks to spread his own version of justice across the streets of Gotham. While Reeves is still rounding out the cast for The Batman, he's already surrounding lead Robert Pattinson with a legit murderer's row of venerated acting talent. With Paul Dano on board to play the Riddler, Zoe Kravitz set to appear as Catwoman, Jeffrey Wright portraying Commissioner Gordon, and Andy Serkis stepping into the role of Alfred Pennyworth. With talent like that on board, it's safe to say that Batman is now in the best hands since Nolan and Bale brought their trilogy to a close. The Batman is currently slated to shoot in 2020 and will arrive in theaters on June 25th, 2021. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Looper videos about your favorite superhero movies are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and to the bell so you don't miss a single one.